Already. Great. Welcome. Hello, museum families. And um, welcome to our BCM at Home Kids, a play date through screens across British Columbia and the world. The previous sessions are recorded and you can find them on our Royal BC Museum YouTube page. My name is Chris O'Connor and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. The museum and my home is on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Songhees and Esquimalt nations here in Victoria on Vancouver Island. I'm an uninvited guest on this territory and grateful to live and learn and raise a family on this land. So we have a special exhibition right now at the Royal BC Museum with paintings by the celebrated artist and author, Emily Carr. Emily Carr lived in this neighborhood of James Bay, not that far from where I'm sitting right now. She loved this neighborhood, but it seems like her real heart was the forest. She was most happy surrounded by trees and she would go on trips within forests nearby and far away and paint them. And that's what we'll be doing today. So let's get into it. Our special guest is a returning champion, uh, Jerry Engen. Jerry is, uh, has been working in art education for over 25 years in elementary school, schools, elementary schools, galleries, museums, community art organizations, and teaching in her own private studio, uh, Kudzu Studio. So Jerry was with us last month, and now she's back. So welcome, Jerry. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> It's so great to have you back. So last time when you were here, we were talking about um, postcards and how Emily Carr, the writer and artist, uh, when she went to France, she would do send postcards back. And that was one way of communicating. So um, today we're gonna be talking about trees. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, um, so, you know, she was a writer and actually um, as successful as a writer, she is a, a painter. So um, it's kind of interesting that we're kind of seeing all aspects, but she did, as you said, felt uh, really comfortable in the, in the woods and um, really tried to capture the energy and the vibrancy that she felt in the forest um, through what we kind of started talking about last time we were together, abstraction. Um, and I, your, the show that you have on it is looking at how she uh, began to look at painting in a, a brand new modern way that um, here in British Columbia and Canada in general was um, unusual and not like shocking, which is hard for us to imagine in our time. But uh, back then it was very shocking. And she used that abstraction as ways to kind of bring the energy and to what she saw when she was in the woods. And so just as a reminder, Jerry, when you say the word abstraction, what do you mean? Yeah, that's great. So abstraction means um, like last week we were simplify, or last week, last month, we were simplifying shape. Um, so it's like changing the shape or simplifying the shape, um, using different colors. So uh, maybe an unusual color from what we usually see or uh, brushstroke, the way that lines and such work, which is kind of what we're going to play with today. Great. Well, let's get into it then. Great. So you <laughs> have a painting to share with us. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to go back to that um, painting. So, all right, here it is. Perfect. So this is trees in France. And it's interesting because when I first looked at it, I thought it kind of looked like an Arbutus tree. <laughs> but I don't, I doubt very seriously this is an Arbutus tree. But I would be curious as to um, what people who are looking at the painting see. Like, what do you notice about this artwork? Maybe I'll channel a little bit of what, what I imagine on the other end of the screen, um, everyone's saying. Um, and also pull up the chat as well so that uh, there might be some. So, um, oops, I went back. Okay, so uh, m like lots of curves. Lots of curves, absolutely. And we see the curves in the trees. Um, lots of color. Lots of color. I wonder what colors that are. They colors that you would usually see? Like, I mean, what, how has she abstracted the color? would be a good question, I think. Hmm. 
What do you notice, Chris? Well, I notice in the, the tree to the right, there is, um, there's like two distinct colors, that kind of brown and blue. They're kind of blocked colors, which you probably wouldn't necessarily see in, in real life. Right. So it sort of feels abstract. Yeah, so she's taken, I, I think you could say she's probably taken out all the texture and things that you would see in a tree and really simplified um, the shape so that it's just a shape and then use just, as you say, blocks of color. Blue might be an unusual color that you would maybe not um, automatically think about putting into a tree. And if you look closely, you might see some oranges and some purples. Um, Emily Carr, loved actually the color brown and green, but she rarely used brown or green to create those colors. So she mixed colors together to kind of get it. So if we look really close at, you'll start to see that maybe there's some greens and not necessarily browns in, in that. Like we got green brown and purple browns. Um, so she's really kind of really felt that there was like hundreds of different colors of browns and greens um, in nature that you, she could utilize. And uh, Jerry, so Clara says that blue looks like shadow. Ooh, I, and I think, yeah, I think that's a really like, especially on that back tree, it's like you can kind of very much sense that that might be where the shadow is, that she's chosen to use blue for shadow. Mm -hmm. We notice that in the ground, she's actually started using a lot of yellows and oranges and reds and even pinks. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to talk about is her brush stroke or her use of lines. And I'm wondering where you might see some unusual brush strokes that she's used or how she's used brush stroke to maybe create some of the things we see. Maybe in the leaves, what do you notice about the way she decided to use brush stroke for the leaves? They, so I'll, I'll channel maybe saying that yes. like, I think they, it almost looks like like blobs rather than like highly detailed leaves. They're kind of blobs that give the impression of leaves rather than actual leaves. Yeah, so again, we can see that abstraction like simplifying into shapes, but then maybe doing almost like a scrumbly type shape for those leaves. And if you notice in the background, um, whether that's mountains or uh, shrubs or trees in the background, she's kind of changed her brush stroke to something up and down using the purples and the pinks. And then you look at the sky and she's almost swooshed it in a sideways and using that block of yellow um, and then that blue, like is that yellow a mountain? Is it like a sunrise? Um, we're not really sure. Whoever's looking at it might have, always might have a different opinion of that. But we can really start to see how she's using brush stroke to kind of create uh, an energy in her artwork. And also in a way a language too. So the blue of the tree that Claire was saying looked like shadow. So when I see that blue again repeated in the background, it almost looks like there's shadow deep in the in the background too. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So those are great observations. So that's kind of what I wanted us to to really, you know, we Chris and I were talking about today is that we kind of focus on is this use of color and uh, line to create our own artwork. And I guess I'm going to use my favorite tree, an Arbutus tree. <laughs> yeah. And Jenny, you can go to a speaker view now. Thanks. So I know Chris mentioned um, watercolor markers. I actually just have uh, washable markers. So what you can buy at any, uh, any store, um, I'm using Crayolas, but you can use whatever kind of washable magic markers that you have in your house. Mine happen to be thin, but if you have thick, that's great too. It won't really matter. I'm not even gonna start with a pencil in mine. I'm just going to start thinking about shape. And I'm gonna use a darker color. So sorry, um, sorry, Jenny, uh, Jerry, I'm just gonna, yeah. um, just in case there's some uh, questions out there. Great. Um, people can sort of follow along with you, right? Right. And then if they want to change things, they're welcome to, but they can, you can think of when you're out there doing this, you can think about shadowing uh, what Jerry is doing, and then you could add in your own uh, details as well. So feel free to, to do this along with Jerry. And because I'm going to be moving very, 
fairly quickly because of our time. Um, maybe it's, you know, you can look at it, what I'm doing as a demonstration, and then you can spend more time uh, doing it on your own afterwards. So we can kind of look at it that way too. Um, but I'm going to start with a tree. And if I was doing this not for camera, I'd probably use like a light color like this because I know it will wash away when I get ready to do the magic part of today, the, the fun part. But I'm going to use a red pen because I think that you'll be able to see it easy. Um, know that if I don't like something, I'm just going to ignore it. It's not a big deal. But when I think about a tree, it's always, I'm just making sure, can you see that, Chris, where you are? Can you see? Or am I going to come up closer? Yes, yes we can see that. A tree is always larger at the bottom, and then it always narrows up. So I'm going to think that that's kind of a place. What I like about the arbutus trees is that they can be kind of like twisty and gnarly. So I'm going to put a knot right here, and then I'm going to come around. And I'm going to, again, remember, it goes from thick to thin. And then a great thing about trees is they break off into Ys. Sometimes the Ys go down. And sometimes they might go up. Do you see how I'm kind of constantly getting from thick to thin? Even when I go off here, they'll always make Ys. It's kind of an interesting thing. Maybe... Hmm, which way do you think I should go, Chris? Maybe I'll go this way. Now you can make your tree any way you want. My tree is looking very funny. I think I'll come off. I'm gonna have it so it's, I'm so close it goes off the, the side. And then I think I'll put kind of like a hillside. You know how we see these hillsides that are kind of going, I feel like it's maybe a little too crooked. This is what happens. So I'm gonna fix that a little bit. And then I think I'll put an ocean in because we're kind of lucky that we are surrounded by the water here. Thinking about that line going sideways, <gasps> maybe some mountains. And then I'll put the sky. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do today. Now I'm gonna start thinking about the way I wanna use my magic markers. Remember I mentioned that she um, mixed her own browns. So one of the ways, and I always think it's fun to learn to mix brown, is if I use complementary colors. So I'm gonna throw some orange in here. Thinking about those great colors of the Arbutus tree, which has got a beautiful orange to it. I'm gonna kind of come through that. And you see, I'm not worried too much about how I'm coloring, but I wanna put some brown on this side. And I know that if I mix blue with the orange, I'll get a brown because if I look at complementary colors, so if I look at orange and blue, red and green, or yellow and purple, I will get a brown and they'll all be their own unusual browns. I don't wanna to get too many colors going in this because if I do, it will end up turning into mud. So I wanna think about what colors that will ultimately blend together. So I'm gonna do some yellows in here. I think, you know, one of the things I really like about their butis is in the summertime when they peel and you see a bit of that green. So I think I'll, even though probably wouldn't see it, I'm going to throw a little bit of green in places. I am going to use a tiny bit of black just because I want to get some contrast in. I'm thinking about the dark side that I might want to use. See, I'm not using a lot of it, just a little bit in places just to kind of give myself a little moment. I'm gonna think about how in that painting, I know somebody mentioned it, that she used, felt like that blue was a shadow. So I think I'll throw some shadow work in with that blue. There's that knot I wanna throw in. And then I think I'm gonna come in, remember how she was doing those bushes, Chris? She was kind of doing, we were seeing these blocks with kind of movement like this. I'm using the side of my marker right now because I have a thin marker. I'm gonna throw in some like scrumbly. Maybe I'll put a bush here. And I'm thinking about the way she was doing those brush strokes. I want it to look like, this is my kind of way of leaf. I think I'll actually use some of this lighter blue that I have too. Throw that in, because I wonder what will happen 
when I use the dark blue versus that light blue. And then I'm going to put and yellow. Gary, I was just going to say at this point, like it's really about like being okay with the messiness. Yeah, then yeah. The magic that with adding water will will bring that all together. Oh, it's going to. In fact, I can show you this is once I've added the water. So you can kind of see how it will change. But I'm also kind of thinking about the different ways that maybe she was using her paintbrush. Like this. Remember those bushes were kind of shapes that were scrumbly. So I'm throwing in now some yellow over all of this. My yellow is a little dry. So I'm really gonna, I'm just gonna cover all of that with yellow. And remember, I was saying about how complementary colors make some browns. I think I kind of want to put some brown in here. So I'm gonna throw a bit of orange in places where I think maybe some ground will be, it's like some of the dirt, right? Um, I feel like I am gonna go ahead and use a little bit of green just because my yellow wasn't looking so great, but it will still make a new green when it mixes with that blue. So it will change as I go. So you can see where I didn't put the scrumbling. I am gonna run my marker and it's my paintbrush side to side. So that's kind of where I'm gonna stop. And I'm thinking, I really kind of liked what she did with her sky. So I'm gonna kind of be inspired by her sky. I think that I will go, hmm, what color do you think I should do, Chris? I'm gonna throw some pink, I think, here. I'm gonna to try to think, what would this sky look like? Because I don't know, Chris, was it very windy where you were this week? Yeah, it was very, very windy. Yeah, it was so windy. I lost power for a long time. So I'm gonna kind of make a windy day. So I'm gonna think of a, uh, what would that look like? I'm gonna kind of make a swirly shape like that. Yeah, and um, a lot of my favorite Emily Carr paintings really are about that sort of movement and feeling. Yeah. She loved putting swirly. movement in the sky. And I always like, um, when I'm in front of Emily Carr's artwork, kind of pretending like what type of, like what would the weather be like that day? Because I feel like she really does kind of capture different type of weathers. So I'm gonna kind of throw in some blues, but you can see I'm kind of thinking whoosh, kind of thinking of that whoosh sound. And right. that's how I'm thinking my brush strokes should look. I'm looking for my light blue. I'm gonna throw some of that light blue in. And maybe somewhere, it's looking very messy right now, isn't it? But it's gonna be okay. I think somewhere I might wanna put a little bit of yellow. Maybe the sun is shining right here. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of yellow color there where I think the sun might be shining. And then basically- you give yourself permission to be messy sometimes. Yeah, it's kind of fun to be messy sometimes. And I think like as long as you're being, you know, I'm still being mindful of what I'm doing, even though I'm being messy. Do you see how I had this branch right here? I've decided I don't want that. So I'm just kind of ignoring it. I'm gonna just have the water be calm and I'm going to have it go like this, just straight across, straight across. I feel like something maybe needs to be a little straighter and calmer in my work. And I'm gonna have it be darker toward that way. I think I will make it all somewhat dark. What other colors do you think you see in the ocean? Sometimes I see some purple, so I might throw a bit of pink in here. Um, and that will kind of, what will, I'm thinking when it blends, it will kind of make it a little bit of purple. And then I have my mountains. And I don't know about you, but I, a lot of times, um, notice that in the evening or in Van in British Columbia, our mountains kind of go purple, don't they? So I think I might make my mountains a little on the purple side. So I'm going to mix some pink and some purples, and that will ultimately become my mountains. So it's, it's nice that you're there's a specific color to like color choices with each of those areas: the sky, the mountains, and the water. But purple seems to be within all three too. So it's nice that there's some some common, common colors too. Well, thanks Chris. So here I've got it. Um, I could, if I wanted to go back in, maybe I wanna put, I put a little bit of black right where 
Um, maybe the water and the, and the mountains will meet. Maybe a, a little bit here. I'm not outlining the whole thing, just so I can add a little bit of contrast. Now, mine might drip because I'm up, I'm, I've got my painting up and down. You'll be having your painting like this, so that won't happen. The one thing that's gonna be important is that when you have your paintbrush, so I make sure that's not going to fall. <gasps> there we are, okay. I don't wanna just have a ton of water on my brush, so I will take my brush and I will take a bit of the water off the side. So I'm always gonna kind of just take a little bit of water off the side. And I think I'll start with these mountains. So you can see now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to paint. And I'm thinking about those directions that I put my markers on. So remember I was kind of doing those mountains so that they were kind of a smooth here. Now, the more I, I rub them, as you can see how I'm rubbing this one really closely, like the colors will blend more. I might not want to always have my colors so blended. Like I'm thinking when I do the trees and I realize, and I'm gonna do it quickly because I haven't put water there. Um, I didn't put any leaves on my tree. My tree right now is bare. Maybe I'll just leave it bare. So here is what's seems, important. Seems kind of appropriate right now. After Sorry? Seems kind of appropriate after a windy yeah, week. It does. All the leaves have blown off and that's why we have this windy sky. Yeah. Um, once you start adding water, it's really important that you don't go back in with your markers because if you put your markers on wet paper, they're going to ruin, okay? So once you've put the water on, you're not gonna use your markers anymore. After it was all dry, if you wanted to go back in with marker, you could, but right now I can't go back in with my marker. But you can see already how that has all blended. But let's say I don't want to blend, I probably won't blend as much of my ground. And then just like when I did, I'm gonna scrumble it. I'm gonna go up and down. Remember in that background when she went up and down? Maybe I'll go up and down some. This I'm just gonna quickly go sideways. But you can see I'm not blending this part as much because I want some of those lines to show. You might want to do that differently, but that's what I'm gonna do. And oh, that's that shadow. So I could have definitely run that shadow sideways because you know that's how it would go. So some places where there's maybe not bush or uh, plants, I'll run my paintbrush side to side. And then when I hit a plant, I'm gonna go up and down. And I'm thinking about how I can abstract going up and down. So Jerry, just a comment from Facebook, just not saying, uh, thank, thanking you for the drawing tips and thinks your painting looks lovely right now. Well, that's really nice of you. Thank you very much. So with my tree, I'm gonna go with my brush strokes going up. I'm thinking about that abstraction. Now, remember where I put the orange and blue? Look at how that automatically started to go brown. Can you see that? Look how it starts to go brown. So that is what's cool. Now I could change. I could decide I want to do my brush stroke going like almost like a smiley face, round and round. And you can see that that changes the way it looks. I might go, I think I'll do a swirl there. And I think then I'll come around here like this. But you can see how I get to decide how much I want to blend and how much I won't. And where that blue and orange meet, look how it turns brown. So that's how I'm creating my brown. I always think it's great to know how to make brown without actually having the color. So there you go. So now I just, I'm gonna change a brush just so we go quick, so I'm looking at time. I'm just going to whoosh. I'm thinking about that wind, remember? Whoosh. I'm gonna do, I have to do sound effects. How can you not do sound effects? I'm creating that brush stroke and I'm going to let some of that. Oh, I lost that tree branch. That's okay. I totally forgot about it. So I'm just going to scrub it. You see, I'm scrubbing that and then it just becomes the sky. And there you have it. So 
kind of a fun way to paint. You don't actually need, oh, I'm gonna lose that branch too because I accidentally went over it. So I'm gonna just pretend that doesn't go. It's part of the magic also. Yeah, is that I could, oh, and oh, look at that cool drip. Now see, I like things like that that happen, but um, I don't worry too much about it. But there you know you what it kind of reminds me, Jerry, a little bit is of a, like a, a waterfall like in that back mountain. Oh, it does. That's a great. And see, I think that is the beauty of mistakes. And um, when I'm working with students in my studio, I always say embrace the mistakes because they're always those great unexpected things that make your painting from a yowza to a wowza. And I love the idea of a waterfall, not something I plan for, but I think it's a great addition. So um, yeah, I don't think that you should ever worry about a mistake. And there, voila, we have a painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's pretty, you and, know. Uh, and Jeremiah in the uh, chat was just saying that um, they're gonna put, they might put an owl in their tree. So, I love that. Yeah, so the, like adding different elements to your particular yeah. painting out there is, uh, is a great idea. And you could go in with pencil crayon afterwards and you could do that while it's wet if you wanted to kind of come in and add, you could start, like if I wanted to really play up that purple and kind of, you know, think about the shadows where I put those. Maybe I want to add some more purple into that part here. You could definitely do that with your pencil crayons or crayons. Or as I said, once the painting's totally dry, you could go back in with your markers. But you might find if you want to put an owl in that that's a place where you don't want to put water on top of it. Maybe you want to leave that just marker. Who knows? It looks, it looks lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun way to paint. And I, I think a lot yeah. of people don't realize what your magic markers can do, right? It's like kind of a fun thing to do. Um, so Megan from Facebook asked, what pens did you use? I used Crayola markers, washable markers. That's what I was using. Not, nothing fancy. Just, you can go to, I think the local drugstore and buy Crayola markers. It's really what most, most of us have in our school supplies. And also watercolor pencils are really fun that way. Watercolor pencils are a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so Caleb is asking, can we have a close up of the painting? Well, we can. So you can kind of see the different, um, I use abstracted with color. I also abstracted with the different ways I ran my brush. The windiness going whoosh here, the up and down of what I was thinking were the bushes um, and the smoothness of the water. So you can kind of see the different ways you can do that. And it's interesting to even st still see some of your marker marks. Right, and you can see I didn't the know that from far away, but close up, you can still see that, which is interesting. Right, so I mean, and I'm in control of that, right? So the mountains you can see where I really um, tried to blend, 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 where you couldn't see my markers, but in my tree, I wanted to see a bit of the marker lines as I did in the grass, so. And you can kind of see where those oranges I put in do start to become like a brown, so it looks almost as if there's some dirt on the ground. It's fun uh, using blue for shadow instead of black. I always uh, like to think it's really fun to use a different color, an unexpected color for shadow. So um, Jeremiah also said that uh, their tree looks like a it's on a mountain, um, which again, it's really, uh, it's it would be really interesting to see all the different variations of this drawing. Yeah. Um, so I put in the chat uh, my email address so here at the museum. So if you wanted to, you can share your art with me and then I'll share it with Jerry also. Um, Jenny, uh, my colleague, will put that on Facebook Live as well. Um, so uh, you can, in the comment section there, so you can definitely share share with, with us. We'd love to see what you did um, and all the different variations because they're all beautiful. Um, and, uh, and we really appreciate you spending time with us. Jerry, thank you so much for um, going through these steps. You made something that looks so beautiful and seems so like easy and manageable if you take it step by step, so. It is, I can't wait to see what everybody does. And I hope you get outside and paint maybe the trees that just sprayed around your house and stuff. You 
Carr loved to go out in the summertime, loved to go out into the woods and paint. A <laughs> yeah. little less comfortable in the winter. Yeah. <laughs> but also interesting too. And uh, Little Acre uh, said, been sharing on their farm's Instagram and Facebook page too. Um, the got a comment say that painting is so beautiful. I'm an artist and this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So thank you so much. Oh, Great. Well, I'm glad to share. It's lovely to hear. So yeah, we'd love to see what you did. Um, just looking at the last full, uh, few comments. Um, yeah. So Jerry, um, two times is not enough to be with you. So we're going to do it one more time. Um, yeah. while we have the Emily Carr uh, exhibition up. So in January, after the new year, you're gonna come back, yes. um, which I'm so happy about. What, what's the theme of that one? Um, do you remember? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, then it's a mystery. But, um, and I don't remember either. We have it planned out, but I don't remember. It's gonna be fabulous, let's just say that. <laughs> I'm gonna put it up on our, uh, on our website. It'll be the second week in January. Yes. Um, and we're, uh, we're really looking forward to having you back, Jerry. Thank you everyone who joined in both on Facebook Live and on Zoom and uh, next week baking with cookies. So, all right. How could so, you go wrong? I don't know, I've, I've, how could you go wrong with baking? That <laughs> sounds like lots of fun. <laughs> painting and baking, the two like- I'm in. <laughs> special things in the world, so. All right, well, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll stop the Facebook Live feed now um, and then we'll stop the recording too.